Lena, your passion and determination for telling visual stories that have languished on the outskirts makes it possible for others to follow their dreams and tell their own truths. First of all, congratulations. <laughs> thank you so much. And thank you for being the first. Sorry, uh, sorry, <laughs> but I'm thrilled that we waited for you. Oh, thank you. thank you. But also, Lena, you made history tonight. Can you reflect a little bit about what that means to you and has it fully sunk in yet? It means a lot to me. You know, I mean, I think to be a first, uh, I think because what it, what it does is it, is it says that it is possible. You embody what black artistic excellence is about, changing the game by changing the narrative and centering us. Hey, look here, look here. First and foremost, I want to congratulate you on the Emmy. Thank you, man. Thank How you. did that feel winning the Emmy? <sighs> man, here's the deal, when Oprah moves her purse, to stand up. What? And, and applaud she did you. this? She was like. <laughs> <laughs> she did. And she I, moved it? She moved it. She was like, oh, hold on, first black. Uh -uh. Tip that right here. You hear me? Get over there. Let me yeah. first black anything. I got to stand up. What should we be paying more attention to? Oof. Um, police brutality. So interesting, you know, there's a study that shows if you're ever being held up with a gun to your head, they tell you to tell them personal things about your life. Tell them you have a child, tell them you're married, tell them where you work. Sure. So to me, I feel like as an artist, I want to humanize black people so much that maybe they'll stop killing us. Anyone who wants to insert themselves in the culture has that right. They just do. It's like life and pursuit of happiness. You also have the right to tell your story. And so I think what we need to do, I think, is to stare at ourselves in the mirror a little bit longer and really own who we are. What up, what up, what up, y'all? I am your girl, Candy. And right now, I brought on my special guest, Lena Wake, to speak on it. I had already heard. I can turn a shade tree into a money tree. <laughs> What's up, Lena? What up, Candy? I appreciate that you allowed me to turn the tables on you because yesterday we were taping oh. Instagram Live. Now, do you always do the Instagram Lives each Sunday after the show airs? The shy. You know? I, yes, I do. It was something that I started doing with Boomerang. I don't know. It, it, it felt like, huh, I want to have a, a, a forum to talk about the episodes. And then I didn't plan on doing it with the shy, but just because I and I engage so much with people on Twitter and they, they DM me. And so I was already having a conversation with people that felt very organic. And then I kind of I wanted to bring you guys into it. I wanted to bring the actors into it to so that way the audience could hear directly from you and they could hear us talk about how you came to be on the show and things like that. So it just felt like it really, it had a lot a lot of benefit. And, and so that's why we've kept it up. As you know, I think I hit you and I was like, yo, you want to go live Sunday? It's very <laughs> loosey goosey. We just kind of, but we also do base it on who's in the show or what's happening. So obviously it was your debut. Hey baby, long time no see. So that made sense to be like, hey, if you're free, let's do this and let's talk about it. And people loved it. People loved our live uh, uh, last night. They were like, oh, okay. You know, because we, it's, there's a comfortability there too. I think that's what people maybe aren't expecting. Mm -hmm. We work together, we, 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 we chit chat on social. So when we, when we get on live, we're just having a, a real conversation and audiences love that. They love knowing what's going on behind the scenes. They love getting right. things confirmed, but they're like, oh yeah, we heard Candy uh, audition for this. Is that true? So it, it's kind of nice to kind of give them a little extra information. So yeah, I, I love doing it and we're going to keep doing it until the season's done. So let me just start off. How has quarantine life been for you so far? Productive. Productive. Yeah. You know, and it's because it, at first I think I was like everybody else, I was like, what is happening? What's going on? I was just going to weird space and not wanting to do anything. Mm -hmm. But then it became quite clear that this was going to be what it was going to be for right. a while. It's and I think people it. like, right. And I think people like myself and you are like, okay, well, let's, 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 uh, let's figure this out. Let's, let's remix it. And right. so that's what I've been doing. And then I, you kind of realize that, Hey, pitches still need to happen. People still, meetings are still happening. And so you just do it via zoom. And, and because there's no travel, we talked about this yesterday because there's no travel time. You can, you, I can have five meetings in, in literally like back to back to back to back because it's just, you're just, okay, thank you. And you get to click new zoom. Okay. Click that one. Um, and then also what I found, I'm curious if this is happening with you too. I'm meeting with people I probably would not have met with if this wasn't happening. <laughs> or like, like, cause I think there are certain people I'm, I'm having meetings with that they're like, hey, I thought about you or, or, or maybe I'm on social more. And so I'm talking to people in that way. And they're like, well, 
oh, I had an idea. Oh, that's cool. You want to do a Zoom meeting about it? It's it's, it's this weird thing where we're more inclined to collaborate and to have conversations that I just honestly don't think would have happened if, you know, like versus, like versus would not have happened. And if, I've been seeing you on versus in the comments, like every time. All the time. <laughs> I'm there. I'm there for the first joint, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and I heard that, I don't know if there was some people were asking for like an, an escape one, maybe, and then versus like, I don't know, like TLC or TLC was calling out escape. I don't know. It was like turned into like a rap war. It was all, I was like, did TLC just call out escape? What is that do? I but, don't know. I mean, somebody mentioned it one time, but of course. TLC, somebody said somebody else. That was cool. It was like, okay, is it a girl group versus girl group? I'm, I'm here for it. Although I would be here for escape versus SWV. That to me, uh, that makes sense makes more sense in terms of just like time and stuff like that. But I love it. And, and also I've gotten to connect with Swiss um, really through that and because of that. Because mm -hmm. like, I, you know, I know Swiss B or whatever, but like, and so Swiss and Tim and I, and so, and stay tuned. I can't give you the exclusive exclusive, but just stay tuned. Um, that's all I can say. But like we, I really was in it and, and I thought it was great. And, and Swiss and I just started, again, he's a person that I probably would not have had a reason to like necessarily have a meeting with. Right. But because I love what he was doing and I was so excited, we've sort of just been having conversations and just trying to just checking in with each other, which is really cool. Has Hollywood opened back up for filming it? Not that I know. I mean, there's I've heard whispers of like some people filming like in Vancouver because there are fewer cases there. I know I think there's some cases of maybe something starting up in London, if I'm if I remember correctly. But in terms of Los Angeles, like where I am, I mean, I know there was some short films that some people did, but they were like COVID short films. So there wasn't like a crew or anything. But I have not heard. I mean, there's whispers of like, oh, maybe October. Well, when do you plan on getting back to work? Like, um, well, let's just say I might be in a virtual writer's room coming up, that makes um, sense. which I can't say which room that is. But but again, and that's exciting. And I'm, I'm excited to be back in a writer's room that way. But we but also, too, I think they're like, yeah, go be in a writer's room, write some episodes. And by the time you guys are done, maybe, you know, it'll be it'll be back. Yeah. And the thing is, is like, we, you know, that you can't you can't say no to it. If a studio is like, yeah, we want to do a writer's room. OK, because that's at this moment, that's all we can do. So I think people and myself included are just trying to figure out how much can we get done up to the point where, you know, the stop sign pops up. See, sometimes we're so used to things being bad all the time that when good things come, we can't embrace it. Let's get free of the idea that we can't go after our dreams because of how we look, where we come from, who we love, or how old we are. We all have gifts and we can either lock into those gifts or act like they don't exist. Have you ever not felt welcome in Hollywood being a queer woman? People have asked, is it difficult being a queer black woman in Hollywood? And I always respond and say, it's difficult just being in Hollywood. To have autonomy, to have power. We still don't, there's, we've had a black president of the United States and we still haven't had a black president of a major studio. Yeah. It's like, we still have work to do in our industry, but ultimately there's change happening. Hollywood's a difficult place. And what I've found and all the things that make me different have actually helped. Because mm -hmm. I always tell people, you know, the best way to be successful is to l keep people thinking about you when you walk out of the room. Mm -hmm. You want to be, I always say, what's specific about you? What's memorable about you? Uh, why will it be hard for me to get you out of my head when you leave a meeting? And, mm -hmm. and that's what I was able to tap in very early. Cause I was like, oh, like I'm, I'm masculine presenting. I love Whitney Houston. I'm from Chicago. I love Jays. I love bitches t-shirts. I all these things that made me who I am, people really were, it made people lean in and it made them go, huh, that's interesting. Or I haven't seen you before. That's really how I look at it is that I always say, if I wasn't gay, if I wasn't black, if I wasn't a woman, that master of none episode wouldn't have existed in the way it did. Or which, you know, or I wouldn't have been able to land that spot in the Spielberg movie because they were really looking for someone like me or in the Vanity Fair cover was a way, <clears throat> like I got to be a, a, the, the first Vanity, the first cover of Vanity Fair when it was the changing of the guard. Mm -hmm. Deacon Jones came in and became the new editor in chief, and she's like, "I'm putting Lena Waithe on the cover." That's my way of saying, "Hi, I'm here." Um, and she was very gracious. She was really kind. I guess when she was interviewing for the job, they asked her, well, "Who would you put on the cover?" And she said, "Lena Waithe." I'm one of those people that didn't have a plan B. Like, if this didn't work out, 
I don't know where I'd be, to be honest with you. And and so she told me that she shared that story with me, being filled, shot for it by Amy Leibovitz, and I was so moved by it. And I, and I think she said she's like because you represent a new Hollywood. That's why for me. It's like I've been very blessed, but I know it may not be this for everyone. But I, the things about me that are that make me different are what I've embraced, and so therefore, so is it seems like everyone else has started to as well. And this is something that I saw that one of my people in my text group told me that. Okay, text group. Text group. Oh, here it is, Marina Jordan. She said, oh. "How did you get your break?" And what did you go to school for? Did you go to school for this? I went to Columbia College in Chicago and studied writing and producing and television. Like that's what I have a degree in. Columbia has this program, and I believe they still have it, where it's called Semester in LA. I did. And again, it's often, a break is a very interesting like term um, <clears throat> because it's interesting. Um, people ask me, how does it feel? You know, are you surprised? And I say, no, I'm not surprised because God saw this all along. Well, I knew very early on that I wanted to be a television writer. Like, that's all I knew. And I didn't know a ton about it. You know, I'm in Chicago. I don't come from a showbiz family, but I just knew I love television and I love writing. <clears throat> and so I was like, that's what I want to do. And I learned it, a, a lot about it. And I had a professor who wrote on the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. And, you know, he, like, he, he was like, he was, I was like, he was, and I still, he texts me today. Like, I, I still communicate with him because I, I fought to get in his class because I was like, this is a person that's actually been in Hollywood and wrote on television and I want to learn from him. And I remember my spec script of girlfriends that I wrote <clears throat> in his class. He gave me an A on it and he looked at me and he was like, you should go to LA. He's like, you should go. He's like, go. He's like, get out of here. <laughs> like, go be great. And I remember that was a moment. So in essence, that was almost like a break to me. Someone that said like, you got it. You got the thing. Not everybody has it. Take it and fucking get out of here. In my 20s, I was broke, living in Los Angeles, chasing a dream. Oh, I moved out to LA in 2006. Yeah, so I've been out here. And so, um, but yeah, and I think that was a, a great moment for me. I think another big break, what a lot of people don't know this, but I wrote on spec, which is an industry term as saying for free. Like <laughs> I wrote scripts, these scripts and did nobody pay me to write them. I wrote The Shy and 20s on spec years ago. Um, I, wrote, I wrote 20s first and then I wrote The Shy. And those are my two spec scripts that you send around to, you know, showrunners, execs to kind of say, hey, this is my voice. This is how I write. And, and people, you know, were very, a big break came for me when both scripts were circulating at the same time because yeah. people were like, hold on. So you wrote this drama about like the coming of age in Chicago. And then you wrote this very light sort of like frothy thing about being in your 20s and chasing your dreams. And I'm like, yeah, because both they represent who I am. And I remember saying to myself, I wanted these scripts because a lot of people write scripts to get staffed. You write something, people go, OK, I'll, I want you in my room. But I was like, I want these scripts to be good enough to get me staffed, but I also want them to be good enough to be on the air. So when I tell you it's a God dream that Showtime <clears throat> and BET are under the same conglomerate, Mm -hmm. So that way, David Nevins, who runs CBS Viacom, who used to run Showtime, who was the first, he's the guy who was in charge, like a part of buying the shy. Mm -hmm. um, he bought my first show. He was like, I love 20s and I want 20s to be on Showtime and I want the shy to be able to air on BET. So for 20s and shy to air back to back on Showtime. Now, well, I thought I thought that was super dope. Like, I didn't was so trying. To, how did you make that happen? Because I just saw you post it. What was that last week? Yeah, yeah. Glory, glory be to God. I mean, the, the, these these um mergers happen. Like right now, Fox, Disney, CBS, Viacom, and so what it means is like Viacom is one. Think of it as one big umbrella, and under that umbrella is CBS proper, the network, and all that go with that, and then BET. Uh, Showtime and a bunch of other like networks are all under the Viacom conglomerate. So David Nevins, who used to run Showtime, now he runs CBS uh, Viacom. He's like, this is this is great. He's like, we can you we can really maximize our audiences. So now you know with the shy and eventually your season, you it can air on BET for those that watch BET, and then there are people that watch Showtime. And same thing with Twenties. There are some people that are like, oh, I already saw Twenties on on BET, but I want to watch it again on Showtime. And the people that don't even know where BET is on their dial are going to look at these 20s and go, what is this? So it really was a beautiful thing. And he wasn't, you know, he just really respected the work. He was like, I really love what you did with 20s. And he's like, and I want some of that. And I want it on Showtime. And I was like, okay. This is from Devon Jackson. 
They said, my daughter, who is 29 years old and I and, um, and has a nine-year-old son, told me she was gay about a month ago. How did your parents react when you told them? Well, the part, it was really the person I cared the most about was my mom, you know, because my dad at that point had passed away. So no. my main parent, you know, and also I think for most people, it's like your mom is what you really care about. Here's the deal. Oh. Was, oh, I was in my it was like early 20s. I had just moved out to L.A. I waited till I moved out to L.A. Why? I was like, let me get out of his Chicago because y'all just like it's not gonna be fun. But I, but also too, I had to, I think, come to LA to spread my wings and to really be free in it. Because also, I was living with my mom when I was in in, in college. Okay. So I couldn't really like be as gay as I wanted to be like, under her roof <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. So I didn't really get to spread my gay wings until I moved to LA. And then a couple of years after being out uh, in LA, and I actually had a job on Girlfriends. I went from writing a spec of Girlfriends. I was working as the assistant to the showrunners of Girlfriends. Okay. And one of which was a gay white man who was like my adoptive father. And he was like, you got to come out. Like, you have to. He's like, it'll change everything for you. And I was like, okay. But I was like, you don't know my mother, man. You know, that whole thing. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> um, and, and the thing is, I always like to tell people, because again, my coming out was very similar to what you see on the Thanksgiving episode. It was my actual experience. I'm gay. What? But it's like, I want to tell people, because even Aziz asked me, he said, oh, is your family super religious? Was that really difficult for you? I'm like, bruh, like my mom couldn't throw a Bible at me because it wasn't one in the house to throw. Like she, it was more about, oh, what are the neighbors going to think? And who else knows? And right. for a lot of people, I found people who are queer have come up to me, whether they be black, Latino, Asian or whatever. They're just like, that was how it was for me. Like my parent was so concerned about what their social group would think and I just never thought I would have a gay daughter or get used to it because one of these days she gonna bring home one of her little girlfriends <laughs> oh Lord. and the episode where obviously grateful Angela Bassett came in and slayed and, and played my mom is that thing about and she does this because I wrote it in I was like when I say it that I'm gay she looks around to see if anyone's heard or and 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 Angela being the amazing actress she is she does it such in such a subtle honest way because she's embarrassed mm -hmm. and I'm seeing that embarrassment and that's really what the heartbreak comes in it's not oh the religious part is more about oh my parent is now I'm an embarrassment and then I came up with the thing about black parents see their kids as trophies Mm -hmm. You know, and if you think about it, it's true. It's like, it's, but a lot of minority parents, like that's the thing. It's like, oh, my kid is going to Howard. Oh, so and so yeah, uh, a, not, is on the honor roll. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. It's like, and so you grow up with that of always trying to please or make your parents proud or to not embarrass. You know what your parents say when they drop you? Now, don't embarrass me out here now. Don't right. Do nothing. Don't act crazy. Act like you got some sense. And so that's really what I was trying to get into. And I was so grateful. I didn't think people would relate to it on that level. But so many people are like, no, that's what it was. Like I became, and it's, I say it's like I'm tarnishing her trophy mm. uh, coming out. And so that's really yeah. what I did before then. I mean, it's crazy that she didn't. I was like, I always joke and say, like, and we put the joke in the episode where I was like, I've been walking around looking like the brat since I was a kid. You know? <laughs> and so it's like, if you're like in the culture, you'll get that. Mm -hmm. uh, and luckily Aziz like knows black stuff so well, like Aziz. Mm -hmm. So when I wrote that joke, I was like, is he gonna get like the, the brat thing? And he totally did. He was like, oh, that's amazing. He was like, yes, yeah, so we have to use the brat reference. But the thing about, I will say about queer black girls is that we are seen as like tomboys or, oh, she likes to rough house. No one associates it with like sexuality. Like my family, I think forever thought, oh yeah, like she's a tomboy and she'll grow out of it. And so I know a lot of people, if you see my pictures from high school, mm -hmm. yeah. But to think about it, there was a time when that was a thing. You guys escape wore very yeah. baggy boyish clothes, but, sure. you, but you were singing about like men, it wasn't a thing, TLC did it. Queen Latifah, like a lot of Debrat, there was it was a it it was kind of almost on trend. It wasn't weird, but right. nobody associated. Nobody was like, oh, does that mean she's gay? But for young men, if they're effeminate and they wear an eyeliner, right. that immediately people are like, all oh, up. He he gonna be gay when he get older. But yeah. I got to be. I look like y'all. I was you know I had the baggy pants and the big t shirts. But for girls, you get to hide a little bit in that because nobody 
cares. Nobody cares. It was, it was cool. Oh, I um speaking of Angela Bassett's role back a little bit. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't tell you this story. I forgot to tell you. So remember, I told you that when I knew that I was coming on the show or what I was coming, uh -huh. for, I was like super nervous, super scared, or whatever, whatever. So Todd, he's actually kept in touch with Angela. Um, they met at the someplace. I forgot what it meant. Classic, this classic Angela Bassett, by the way. She's yeah. like so cool. Yeah, she's like super nice. So they yeah. keep in touch from time to time. And he, I guess he had reached out to her to be like, hey, could you give Candy like some words of encouragement or like <laughs> help her out? So she actually got on the phone with me, gave me like some tips, told me yeah. what to do, um, you know, gave me some different ideas of how I should, you know, look at my character, all kinds yes. of things. Yes. So, so happy. she's amazing. I mean, who better to get advice from than the queen, you know? And, I, and, I, and I'm really glad like we're saying this because I mean, it's like, if you, it's not something I talk about, but Angela is the person, she's also still in my life. You know? yeah, I remember saying that day in, in um, on the set, I said, do you need anything from mm -hmm. me? Well, what you did is you gave us what we needed. Oh, Thank you so much. See what I'm saying? You. you know, it's like, you know, we still, stay in contact. She really is like another mother now for me, but she's so down to earth, so about the craft. Um, and just when she came on set for Master of None, we were nervous. I was nervous. You know, I mean, this is this amazing actor and I'm going like, okay, what's about to happen? But she's so present and she's so just a team player and she came to work. Me and Aziz kept saying like, she does know like this isn't her first and last job, but she's gonna keep working. But she just, you know, she comes, so prepared and ready to play. And I think I'm like, oh, so this is why you are a legend and you've been in the game right. for so long. Cause so you look, she treats everything like it's her first and last gig. And so it's amazing. Okay, this is my question um, to you. Mm -hmm. uh, since we, you know, since I want to come off of being too, too damn safe. I'll see, here we go. This is like on the <laughs> show when they play the shady clips. Not shady. So what's your relationship status? Is it single, relationship, or entanglement? <laughs> you know what, I, um, I still don't quite know what entanglement means, so I don't want to say I'm entangled. Um, you know, I think what people know I've, I've broken up, I'm really, really trying to be in relationship with myself, honestly, which I think is important. So that's sort of what I'm on. I'm, and I think the, the quarantine of it all lends itself to that, <laughs> is that you are forced to look, go within and uh -huh. look at yourself and you may not like everything you see or, or you may, there's things you may want to work on about yourself. But I think for me, that's really been a big thing is really going within and, and doing that work and doing the virtual therapy thing. Uh, the virtual with, therapy? Oh yeah, man. Like even like, but I, I've done therapy for a long time, but because I've, I've, I'm traveling or I'm doing stuff, I would do phone, you know, sessions. So it's actually not that foreign mm -hmm. to me now to be uh, doing therapy and, and it being via this way, Zoom. Mm -hmm. but, um, but I just think it's super important to check in with my mental health um, as well as my physical health, <laughs> as, as everybody's trying to be mindful of. But yeah, I'm just trying to go within and make sure I know who I am and what I need moving forward. So that way, when I get into another relationship, it's healthy and I'm and I'm making sure I'm bringing my best self to the table. Coming out of a long relationship, especially with, I would say, if a long, if you're if you're in a long relationship when your career is like really going and when you really get to where you, you know, really start making moves or whatever. Mm -hmm. Do you feel now, did it take you an adjustment to feel like, whoa? Well, I'm actually grateful I was in a relationship during that time because you need you need someone that knows you and you know why they're there. You don't want to be wondering, you know, when you get to a certain place, like, huh, what's this about? So I think sure. for me, I was really grateful that I could grow and, and learn while it, it, in my career and in my life while being in a stable relationship. And, and I could, I had a place to always go to and I I was gonna be held accountable. And right. so I, I get what you're saying, but my point is like, I'm just gonna keep it 100, yeah. all of us are on you right now. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It was yeah. on the cover of, what was that, Vogue or whatever. Yeah, baby, yeah, baby fair, Vogue soon. Baby fair, yeah, I'm sorry, baby fair. So my point is it's like, 
just like you said, like, do you ever question people's intentions now when they're, you know, coming at you, flirting, whatever it is may happen? Oh, yeah. You got to be careful. You know, you can't right. just like take, you know, is. But I think and I think you can relate to this, too. When you are a public person, mm -hmm. you have like you got to really you have to have even stronger spotty senses. It's, but also I think it's a thing that kind of kicks in the more time you spend in the public eye. You just kind of have a you just it's your gut. And sometimes, look, and sometimes your gut isn't always right, but you have to follow your gut. And then you also got to be surrounded by people. That can also be your second eyes and ears and right. kind of, you know, like, oh, I don't know, maybe, you know, so you got to have those people that you trust. But mm -hmm. yeah, I definitely feel, you know, that people are watching and people are looking and, but also too, I think there are certain things and it's so, I'm sure it's annoying. And I've heard this from, you know, people of note as well. Oh, there's certain things I got to keep for myself and certain things I have to figure out for myself before I bring it to the world. Because I think sometimes people, I get it. There's a there's a fascination. Hello, the entanglement thing. Like that's never yeah. gonna go away. You know, right. that's never gonna go away. And what I know is that people expect a lot of me. You know, when I make a mistake, people are like, well, you know, they they want me to hold myself accountable, which I'm always gonna make sure I do. I, I'm not gonna always get things right. And so what I always tell people is I just ask for grace. You know, it's like if I slip up or I do something that's not quite right just give me space to course correct. Mm -hmm. And also, I also ask people to grow with me. This has been a journey. People, there are some people that I remember when I was just online doing silly videos to now, you know, we got two shows on and a Queen and Slim or, or the Spielberg movie. Like, so it's like people have been on this journey with me and that's what it really feels like. That's why the whole, I call my people, my play cousins. Cause I was like, it feels like you people have grown up with me and I'm still growing. And I'm, and I'm going to still try things and I can't promise that I'm not going to mess up or slip up or do something that's where I'm not my best self. I just ask that when you see me, you see you mm -hmm. and know that there have been days where you've maybe done things where like, damn, I wish I would have handled that differently. Or I wish I would have done more of that situation. Or I wish I would have exited that situation with a little bit more class and a little bit more grace. I, I definitely feel like sometimes it can be frustrating to, to grow up and to go through things and to break up and to figure it out in front of people. But I also know that that comes with the dinner. You know, it comes with the dinner. dinner. Yeah, it comes with it, you know, and you can't enjoy, you know, the fruits of your labor without right. doing the digging and, and getting your hands dirty. What's <laughs> your most public situation that you've been like, damn. Oh my God, so many. I mean, I think what happened with the shy was really tough because oh, yeah. I, you know, I just wish I had the tools and I wish I was more mature and I wish I was more, I just wish I, was, I stepped up in a different way. And, um, and even my behavior that followed, you know, I wish I would have just handled it differently. But now it is it, obviously, you know, you were part of this new season. I hope you can speak to it, but it's like the, it's it's we finally figured out our groove. You know, we finally figured out the ingredients, and, mm -hmm. and it takes time sometimes to do that. It was take time to to learn the lessons and to yeah. to really figure it out. And so now it's like now something else happens, and it's like please take me down because you're gonna be like yo. But it's like I yeah, we're always learning. We're all forever learning. It's like right. you never had that situation happen before. How were yeah. you? Supposed to know how to deal with it. Um, you know, and obviously breaking up in front of people is never fun because people like to try to guess, do a guessing game. Here's the deal. <clears throat> it's never fun to pop up on the shade room unless it's about something positive. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, um, you know, because it's like, cause I, I scroll through the shade room like everybody else, but like, mm -hmm. I'm also a person that like, I, <laughs> you imagine scrolling through it and you're there. It's like, you're the, it's, oh, please understand. I know that feeling. Oh, I know. <laughs> yes. It's not I know good. you know. I hear a lot. I know, but it's, but it's like, you know, we're like, we're like everybody else. We, we look at the shade room, you know, we, we, right. we like to have fun, but sometimes we're the story and that's not fun. And so I think that's why I think we have empathy for, that's why I think we look at the shade room differently. So sometimes some weeks we're, we're there and then sometimes we're not. And I think when we're not, we look at, we, I think we may be more empathetic where we look at this like, well, look, we don't know all the facts. We don't know what happened. You know, we're going to do that. 
<laughs> yeah, it's like we don't. Well, you know, we we don't know the whole story. You, I'm sure that's how we looking at it, and people kind of like, mm -mm. I know what's up, or da 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 da. It's yeah. it's easy to to judge and to assume when you you haven't, you know, your picture ain't there, and it's like all the comments, and you like. <laughs> well, what I will never do, I'm never because I've seen this because Kevin Hart does it. He'll be commenting, he'll be in the thing, and I want to be like Kevin. Stop. Don't say a word. Don't do it. Mm -hmm. Has there ever been a situation where a majority of the room wanted one story or whatever, and you said absolutely not? Yeah, it might have been the time where I think they might have wanted <laughs> you and I to have a an entanglement scene. <laughs> And, and I think it's because oh, I was. Oh like, man, you had to go veto the whole situation. What's up? No, it's like to me. I thought it was more interesting for us to allude to the idea yeah. that not you know. To me, I think sometimes less is more. Mm -hmm. And also, I would have felt like I get it. I get why the room is like, oh, that would be high, you know. But I never want it to. I don't. I just. I'm not that person. I don't want to do a thing to get people, you know, riled up. It's like, unless it serves the story, I'm not doing it. And so I get it. I totally got it. And they were, I think, bummed. They were like, come on, like, listen to your baby. But I'm just like, that is, is such a, it becomes a distraction. And then the show becomes a caricature onto itself. The sex scene with Dre. Mm. And when they got married, they had the sex scene or whatever. And then she yep. put the pants down and the whole strap on came out. Yep. I don't think a lot of people was ready for that. Nope. <laughs> I my Twitter feed was going crazy. They was like, wow. People still tweet about that, by the way. They're like, I'm still reeling from, you know, I'm going like, what? But the thing is to me, and I think people, you know, I hate when people say the whole agenda word is so offensive. But I think to me is that what people have to understand is that you we see heterosexual sex all the time. Mm -hmm. All the time. Constantly. It's the norm. And I want to make it less abnormal for, for people to see queer sex. And the truth is that's never, I don't think has really been seen, you know, a black dildo, a black strap on to just black women making love um, and, and that way. And so it's like, I don't mind being the first. I've been the first a few times. And sometimes, but you know what? Sometimes being the first through the wall, you get the most cuts, you get the most bruises. And a lot of people are like taking swings and like, I didn't, da, 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 I didn't need that. But you know what? Five, 10 years from now, I believe people are going to look back at that moment and say, this was the beginning of normalization of queer, uh, like just sex on TV because there needs to be more of it. And, and a lot of obviously lesbian women, particularly black lesbian women were like, thank you. Okay. Cause we here too, we get it in as well. And you know, sometimes the strap on is uh, whipped out for all those that felt invisible and frustrated by that scene, a lot of people felt seen and felt validated by that scene. And that to me is really important. I feel like that we have to show different kinds of sex, you know, and because the truth is for lesbians, it all looks different. Not all lesbians have the same kind of sex. There's still so much to be learned, you know, and gained. And it is only, it's like, I'm not going to throw it all in one episode or one show, but I think the more time I get to spend with these shows and with different characters, the more we all can learn and explore um, what sex looks like for everybody. Because the truth is, it's not okay just to have a lesbian couple there if you don't ever see them be intimate. That's a cop out. You know, I was just, I just had to ask you that because it was a lot of talk. I mean, even some of my homegirls was like, okay. <laughs> Because the other part of that, they thinking like, you were supposed to do that? <laughs> you would have. You would have. I would have. I would have. You absolutely would have. Yeah, I wouldn't have had an issue with it. No. But, um. Well, this has been a great conversation. I don't want to talk your ear off and hold you to, the, to forever. Oh, we, can, we can get into some shit. This is hilarious. I, I know. Um. Luke James is phenomenal this season. So great. Phenomenal. Obviously, you have brought in another storyline this season with um, Jasmine. Yes, that's a, her real name. Uh, Imani is the character's name. Yeah. Imani's the character's name. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm no, you too. But Jasmine, yeah, Jasmine's her name. She's a Chicagoan. She's dope. Um, a lot of people did not realize at first that she was a woman of trans experience. But a lot of, of people were, you know, surprised or some people were offended, like you said. Some people are like, they use the word agenda, like mm -hmm. you said. 
um, as far as you using, um, well, having that as a storyline in within the show. I mean, to me, it's so interesting because it feels like people are talking about as if like he's in in love with an alien or something. It's like no, it's like a a, a person who who happens to be trans is is no different than anyone else. They're a human being. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, but I love yes, come on terminology, a person of the trans experience. Okay, and so uh, that's very well, come on, that's important. <laughs> you know, teaching people the the terminology, you know, learning people's proper pronouns, all that kind of stuff is really important. But I was something I actually wanted to do since day one. But and I was so frustrated that I couldn't get that storyline in the first two seasons because there was sort of this sort of like tug of war of like the creative like, of the show. And and finally, in season three, we made it happen because I was like, I'm a like this is important to me to make sure that we don't ignore th this the trans community. I didn't want to hang a hat on it so much. I didn't want that to be the center of this character's story because her story is so you know, complex and interesting and layered that her being trans is just one of the many things she, words she can use to describe herself. And it's really low on the list. So mm -hmm. that was really important. And also to see a trans woman just be loved and cared for. And, mm -hmm. and even if it, it may, some of you may call it a hood relationship. Mm -hmm. It's like, but there's a lot of tenderness there as well. And they're really trying to build a family and she's ride or die. She's like helping him out and grabbing mm -hmm. a gun. And, and, and also she cares about these women that she sees in this house. And it was like, that, that could have been me. And and um, and she has a lot more people will learn about her and her, her story and her uh, past as, as the episodes continue. But, you know, my hope is, is we have to continue to humanize and normalize people who have been marginalized. Mm -hmm. Because it's the same thing with us. It's like there was a time where you couldn't see a black person kiss a white person on TV because they thought it was dangerous. They right. thought it would encourage people to mix the races. And what people have to understand is the language is so similar. People used to say that was an agenda, you mm -hmm. know, and, um, and that that was offensive and right. that they didn't want to see that on their TV screen. So people don't even realize it's like if you become oppressed long enough, you start to sound like a, the oppressor, you know. And so for me, it's really about making sure we don't oppress each other, mm -hmm. uh, any of us, in any way, shape, or form. And and Jasmine is such an amazing actress, and she's she's just a fantastic person. And um, and Luke is doing a wonderful job on the show, and uh, and it's been a great conversation. And I kind of love it. And when people, it to me it's a great compliment when someone says, oh, you really challenged me, or that was a little uncomfortable, or mm -hmm. I kind of was squirming in my seat. Good, art, that means the art is doing his job. The reason why I brought Luke up is because he's a singer, first as a singer. He's yeah. obviously an actor, but a lot of people know him first as a singer. Uh -huh. So he has to you know, be able to transform the way he has in the show, I just thought it was like super dope. Okay, and he auditioned like anybody else and I was surprised to see his tape and I was like, okay, let me see what he's working with. And I was just so impressed and I thought, oh, this is great because Luke has that. He has a bit of a rough like thing. You don't know what's about to happen, but he's also super tender and like very much a hippie. So um, so he's just, he's that guy. And and I think that really helped and, and, and uh, created such a beautiful energy on set. So, I mean, I, I would be wrong if I don't ask you what made you think to use me in the show. <laughs> well, you the were in to see the IG live we did that. Oh, yeah, I know about to say like well the thing is that you auditioned, you know, and I didn't I didn't know you were auditioning. I I never I don't know anything. Like you know, Carmen sends me, <laughs> you know, um she sends me the the tapes and says, "Hey, this is who I think who I think is interesting." And so I watched the tapes and and she really remember pinpointed you and it was like, "Yo, Candy's really great." And it, initially it was for a different role, it was for Dre, but we were super impressed with that and we were excited about that. And, and then uh, the scheduling thing became an issue. And we really liked you so much for it. We were like, can we like maybe lessen some of the stuff? And the, But then, you know, creatively we were like, nah, like Dre is in this, like if we need her. But we were just so impressed with the work. When another, when, when Rosalind came about and we were writing that character, we thought, oh, maybe Candy could do that. And you, you, you know, you were like, you were so open to it and you came in and you're like, yeah, like I'm down. And it just sort of worked out organically, but it really was the work you put in in that audition in order for Carmen Cuba, who is one of one of the best in the business. I mean, like she won an Emmy for casting Stranger Things and she, she cast Queen of Slim and, and, and she's, she's cast a few things for me uh, since then. And she, I just trust her. So when she was like, yo, Candy has the ability to handle this, but she, that means she definitely can handle that. And so I was like, okay, great. 
let, let's do it. And we were really excited and um, and really thrilled to to introduce you to people in a new way. Because yes, I know people know you as you, and but I think you've had to transform a couple times because I just knew you as a part of you know a, a, a song, a singer, and a songwriter. And then you transition into okay, this is who she is as a person. This is so great. And so I'm honored to be a part of this sort of new chapter for you of like you really taking acting seriously. And I get it. I think you're right. People do tend to go, uh, I don't know, really. And I'm telling you, I'll be 100. People were hitting me. They were like, Candy Dog, oh, come on. And I'm going like, you don't trust me? In this season, our guest stars are Lala Anthony, Candy Burris. I got you. And Luke James. I remember calling a person. I'm not gonna call him out, no. but I called him. I was in my car and I called and I was like, yo, she's good. She's good. And I'm gonna make sure I do my part so that way she shines. And they're like, okay, all right, we'll see. And and then what's so great is I also like too, I'm like, damn, like this is like crazy town. Cause I feel pressure too. I felt pressure coming to this season, obviously for obvious reasons. Right. So I, I understand like you feeling that, but I didn't get it until we announced it. And you you see people like, well, no, nah, that's housewives. That's she housewives. I'm going like, man, we like I said, I want people to grow with us, like grow with us, give us some grace. And and um, and then I was so grateful when people hit me and comments, oh, she was great, that was good, like, oh, that was lit. And I'm like, okay, great. And it's nice to surprise people, but sometimes it's like, give us some grace, y'all. Long time no see. It was dope working with Candy too. And her vibe on set is real cool. And I like how she gave her character some of her flavor. I cannot wait. I know every time I turn around, even my mama called me last night asking me, Where's, what happened to Keisha? Where's Keisha? Keisha Williams has been missing for seven days. There's a chance that she won't be found alive. Like almost every day I see something about human trafficking or a black woman going missing. Your child is my child. These kids belong to all of us. Everybody want to know where Keisha is. I know. I mean, I can't tell you, you know, but it, but what what I do like is that when we tell you, we're going to tell you, we're going to really take you into it. It's not going to be just all of a sudden, you know, you'll just get the answer. We're going to take you through it. We're going to really take you on a journey with her family. You learn more about them. It doesn't just say like, oh, the women are missing. It actually gets deeper in it. It offers a glimpse into what we go through as you know, black people in these neighborhoods. And what happens to the families of these people. And they often, a lot of these crimes are unsolved. A lot of these women have not been found. And we did want to call attention to this is a real problem. This is a real issue and we can't ignore it. And, um, and if we can in any way bring attention to this issue with the TV show and people being very invested, like where's Keisha? There's a lot of Keishas out there that haven't been found. And we gotta we gotta remember to to never stop looking. Well, what you looking forward to? What am I looking forward to? I'm honestly looking forward to the world opening back up again. I think I'm in that space right now. <laughs> um, but I but but at the same time I'm trying to be embrace this this time that we're in and and, and get the most out of it. Uh, but I do. I'm, I think you you're, you probably can relate. I miss hanging out with groups of people and like doing the thing. It, it, it feeds me. It gives me energy. It, it inspires me. I'm looking forward to this movie coming out that um, I got to produce. I got to help finance. It's called 40 Year Old Version, spelled V E R S I O N. Um, a, amazing writer, director, actor in her 40s, made her first feature in her 40s. It's called 40 Year Old Version. And it's a, a story about a playwright who gets really frustrated uh, in that world and decides to kind of become an MC to find her voice again. And it's a black and white, shot completely in New York. It went to Sundance. She won Best Director. She's only the second black woman in Sundance history to ever do that. And um, her and Ava hold that title. And so it, it'll be out this fall. It's amazing that they both work with you. <laughs> I mean that well, I feel honored. I feel like I'm in a good, you know, good energy. But I was really honored to be a part of that, a part of that history. And so it'll be out this fall. It'll be on Netflix. Yeah, and I'm excited. We got a lot of things coming. We've been working on a lot of stuff. I know you know that, like you in the you in the lab cooking some stuff up. But I'm also looking forward to people seeing the rest of the season. Like it's so funny because people think that they've been shocked and in awe. I'm like, y'all haven't seen anything yet. Like you literally have no idea. Mm -hmm. What's coming? <laughs> like it's it's a lot. Prepare yourselves. Prepare yourselves. Well, thanks for 
sitting and talking with me all this time. I know oh, you. Thank you. One more question. <laughs> I know we could do this every day. We here. We got it. You ain't got time to do this every day. <laughs> Neither do you. Neither do you. I know you don't. When I was trying to work out your schedule, I was like, okay, she's busy. I want to ask you for whatever else you got going on too. Let's go. Like real, like, yeah. And we're going to keep proving these people. We're going to keep showing them to the point where they're going to be like, oh yeah, okay. She cool. And I think that's what you're going to have to, I think, keep doing is continue to show up and continue to, I don't want to say prove people wrong. I don't like that. But to continue to show people that you're multifaceted. Well, thank you so much, Lena. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me today. Um, Everybody, please follow Lena on social media. It's Lena Waith, right? I'm going to put it on the screen so they can see it. Lena Waith, everywhere. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. And what's your production company page? Hillman Grab Productions. Yes, follow us there for any mentorship opportunities, giveaways, and also um, Hillman Helps, where if you need anything or you're struggling, like hit us up there as well, and we'll see what we can do to help you out. Gotcha. All right, y'all. She answered all the questions that we had, so I hope that was good enough for you. If not, you're just going to have to catch her on the ground. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> thank you for, oh, make sure you like, subscribe, comment, share with all your friends, and we're watching. Speak on it. <laughs> One of my favorite movies as a kid was The Wizard of Oz. No shade to the Wiz. <laughs> but I would watch that movie every day as a child. And there's this moment in the movie when Dorothy, Dorothy's presence interrupts the peace in Oz, which forces all the munchkins to go run and hide. So Glinda the Good Witch tells them in a very soothing voice to stop hiding. She tells them to come out. Come out. Wherever you are, don't be afraid. It's interesting how things you hear as a kid take on a whole new meaning when you're an adult. I had already heard. I can turn a shade tree into a money tree. These questions ain't been too hard. These no, they ain't been too hard. They ain't been too hard. I told you, you, you safe. You safe. <laughs> you're a little safe. Uh-huh. Okay. Not like a reunion special. <laughs> like, shit. Like, uh-oh. <laughs>